hello, hello, and welcome to It's All Good. I am your host, Latavia, and back for another episode. If this is your first time listening or watching, welcome, and we are I'm happy to have you here. Uh, it's All Good is a podcast that I started to share my journey with accepting this lovely thing called life and the fact that it is a process, a journey, not a destination. Um, As I have learned to embrace and accept, I'm an adult and I do this adulting thing. Some days I do it really well, other days not so much. So this is just my, me sharing with you my experiences. Um, I'm not an expert. I figure things out from day to day and from time to time I have Uh, family, friends, or just other people that I have met along my journey um, to share their experiences, advice, lessons learned, all that good stuff, all the ups, downs, in-betweens, and joys that come with living life and specifically adulting. So once again, welcome. I'm happy that you're here. I start each episode with what I like to call my gratitude moment. Uh, because one of the ways that uh, helps me as well as others get through this adulting journey um, is to remember what we're grateful for and to just take some time to focus. So each week I share something or someone that I am grateful for. And this week I am grateful for family for one um, and then specifically my sister who I was able to spend the weekend with her, she and a group of her friends as we were celebrating um, her bachelorette. It was a bachelorette trip, so celebrating her and her upcoming marriage. Uh, the wedding is a little over a month away, so it was it was nice to kind of put all the planning and all the things that come with that to the side, and also just to be able to spend some time with her, get to know her friends, uh, and just, like I said, spend some time, get away, have some fun, catch up, learn about her friends, get to know different things, make connections, all that good stuff. So it was it was a good time. I think it was one that was something, one of those things of everyone needed in a way, but didn't necessarily know it was needed. So it was a long weekend. It was a big reminder of how much I do not go out anymore and how much the pandemic has turned me into a true homebody. But it was also nice to just be like, okay, yes, there are things happening outside the house. And it's it's not, it's okay. It's not that bad. Um, people still wearing masks. Some people aren't. So it's, it was cool in terms of just kind of in the midst of all of that, navigating these this new normal that we have. But, um, and like I said, with her, with that being the thing that I'm grateful for today, I did also want to. I wanted to talk about um, the importance or the benefit of of having a village, but also taking the time to reconnect um, and share and support, and how that support from your village, um, or even your village, you know, those people who are village adjacent. I don't know. I just made that up. Uh, but how making sure that although you have them, that you are taking the time to connect or reconnect and actually catch up with them and reap the benefits of that. And I say that because, granted, yes, the, the, the goal or bulk of the weekend was celebration, you know, having fun, going out, doing different games, taking pictures, all that good stuff. But I would say one of the biggest... I'm gonna say takeaway or kind of the big highlight for me of the weekend, and I guess this, I would say part of this is just because me as a big sister, although some days I don't, often I do not feel like a big sister because we are 13 months apart. Um, so we grew up, we're, we're very close in age, although we are very different personality wise. But the big sister in me uh, was, I would say my joy came from, I would say, the last day of the weekend, just where there was an opportunity to just kind of reflect on the weekend, but also on life and just kind of a check-in moment of, hey, how are you doing? And, and like everyone being able to share and being able to give her that moment, I guess kind of that the whole premise of waiting to exhale that movie has become much realer to me as I've gotten older and understanding the whole premise of 
you know, we technically we exhale every day because well, hopefully you're breathe if you're alive, you're breathing. So you're inhaling, exhaling daily. But that opportunity to literally just like let it all out, to put all the responsibilities of life to the side for a little while and to just be able to be yourself and not have to be on, um, which you know it may, reminds me, kind of takes me back to what I talked about last week in terms of Judge Katanji uh, Brown Jackson in that as a judge, I'm sure she's on all the time, but you know, going through the Senate confirmation hearings, being literally on for three days straight, like 12 hours a day, and having to keep that composure and, and not let them let not let them see her sweat that whole thing. So I can imagine when that was done, she had a really big exhale. But like I said, back to this weekend, um, the opportunity for for one my sister to be to see her be able to just relax, like relax, relate, release, literally, um, and knowing that she felt comfortable doing so. And not just her, but myself and some of the other ladies there, but knowing that there was this, there was a comfort and a recognition of you're not in this alone. We all go through different things at different times. Um, being an adult is one thing. Being a black woman, being a woman and then a black woman on top of that, there are a lot of pressures that come from that. And this, even though it's not, it's not always explicitly stated there's this implicit message that I think we receive when we're young about you got to be strong you can't do you know got to present a certain way and keep it all together because the strong black woman which I'm personally I think I've shared this before I'm, I'm a little over that because yes I'm strong but I don't want to always be strong and sometimes I do just want to eh, I'm not responsible somebody else be in charge um especially when thinking about just relationships or, or roles that we have. But, and even thinking of keeping it all together again, I can't ign not acknowledge the whole Oscar situation with Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Um, I don't, I don't condone violence. However, I do also understand that, I feel like I kind of see both sides of it and I'm, I'm, I'm getting off track, but I definitely understand the desire, the need to protect your wife. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm happy that he protected his wife. I, I think in some ways he also brought more attention to her and the situation with the way that he handled it. Um, I also think that it might have been a matter of he was at his breaking point of you can you can keep your composure and you can be, you can, um, you know, kind of ignore things, but we all have our breaking point and so that joke that Chris Rock made apparently was his. I also don't think it was in poor taste. It wasn't a great joke. I also don't think Chris Rock said it maliciously. I don't know that he, he knew about what was going on, but there's, you know, like that could be a whole back and forth. Like I said, I just, in, in thinking of remembering that that happened, it's to me another reminder of the pressures of life and then pressures that we sometimes put on ourselves that we think it's outside or you know society putting it on us but oftentimes we're putting those pressures on ourselves um, and so recognizing that one all of the shoulds and all that stuff it's sometimes it's it's self-inflicted and so kind of being able to take the time to stop and say do I have to do this is this really a requirement or is this something that I think I need to do or not wanting to let any balls drop and feeling like, okay, I've got to make sure if I don't do this, then this won't happen. And realizing that sometimes we have to let other people, we have to allow other people in and allow them to help us, allow them, give them the opportunity to prove us wrong, you know, if it's like, oh, I don't think anybody else can do it like me, or I feel like if I don't do it, it's gonna fail, or I don't want this person to not have this, so I'm gonna make sure it gets done. But giving people, as well as yourself, the grace and the space to fail, 
um, to learn from a mistake because I think if we always are doing things for other people we're doing ourselves a disservice and we're also doing that person a disservice because they never truly learn or find out if they can do something on their own without their guidance without guidance of others and one of the things that came up or came up often was just how important and beneficial going to therapy is um, I am a very large I'm a big proponent of therapy I honestly think it's something that as citizens of this country or just humans we should all have I think that should be something that is a right um, that we have definitely black people women uh, I just think that's you know if there ever if we ever get reparations I think that should be included in the package free uh, mental health counseling um, and it's not something that it's oh something something has to be wrong I think it's one of those things that it's just hey it's good to have someone else to, even if it is just venting or to help you work through different things um, and help you develop or identify different tools to help you cope with certain things. Because there's some things, like as long as we're living, there's gonna be some kind of a trigger, there's gonna be some kind of stress. S stuff is gonna happen as long as we're alive. And so it's, we can't fix every, and it's, I don't even think it's about fixing something or fixing a person because I was that person when I first started going like okay how long is it going to take for you to fix this like am I fixed yet is this is this over because I mean that's what I'm here for this is what I think is wrong now can you fix me or is it better and that's not the way it works and one of the things that I have learned and continue to learn and accept that hey there are some things that regardless it's going to be there um, like for me, there's times, you know, I, I, I get anxious and as much as I don't want to be, I'm learning, I have learned it's going to happen, but how I respond to it is the difference maker. Um, and even, you know, in, in that, I always, even when I'm having those moments, like people always, if, if you are familiar with the Bible, there is a scripture in Philippians that says, you know, be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication, you know, by prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. I'm paraphrasing. But essentially it's saying be anxious for nothing, but basically pray and tell the Lord what you need and what's going on. And sometimes even thinking about that creates more because like, okay, I shouldn't be anxious because I need to just pray about it. But also I still have these thoughts and these feelings. And so it's like a spiral. But one of the things that I've learned is those thoughts or those moments will happen how I respond and react in that moment is the difference maker. Um, it's the difference between kind of becoming paralyzed with thought and, and emotions and just kind of going down this rabbit hole or it's, hey, no, this is what's real. This is what's, these are feelings. These are facts. Um, this is what I know to be true. This is just some stuff I kind of has been created in my head and kind of going from there. And that's something that I have learned and continue to, I guess, a, a skill that I'm continuing to develop. And that, I would say, is a result of me going to therapy um, and being intentional about going. And I, and I, I also want to add, I recognize that being able to go to therapy in some respects is a privilege. I recognize it's not free. As much as I think it should be, it's not free. And it's not cheap. Um, if you have insurance, I think it's more affordable, but not every, all insurance is not created equal. And I know that everyone is not in a position to be able to afford therapy. So I recognize that, but I, in the same vein, if there, there are a lot of different, there are a lot more tools and resources and even some things that are free so I encourage anyone listening that if you are in a position where you can't afford it or you don't have the insurance or even with your insurance it's just not realistic um, to seek out the free resources and I think that's where having that village or having someone that know they may not be a trained counselor or therapist but at least being able to get it get things out so that you're not trying to carry everything on your own because I think that's where 
that's where we get into trouble because we isolate, even without realizing it, I think we start to isolate ourselves and it's like trying to just deal with everything on your own and it just gets to be overwhelming. But that's been my experience and the reason and so in, in the, con- you know, kind of going back to this weekend, the conversation was not all about therapy, but what was a common thread throughout the different conversations we were having is how several of us have attended therapy or have sought or receiving therapy and how it has helped us to, one, identify the different challenges or areas that we're having individually as well as within terms of relationships or inner communications with others, of being able to identify what, you know, hey, well, where is, you know, what's the source of this? And then also being able to come up having, developing the skills and the tools and the, the language to express to other people what we need or what we don't. Being able to identify, well, what is a trigger for me? And is this something that I can work, you know, I'm working on, I can heal from, and then it won't be an issue anymore? Or is it something that, hey, it's going to be a continual healing process? And there are some things like that. And so it was, I guess, the the, the, what I would say to me, the, um, I love talking and I love conversation. So that was why why it was such a big thing for me was just it's an ability to connect on a different level. Like, yes, we can dance, we can laugh, we can joke, we can have fun together, but, but what's really going on? Like, how are you doing? And what do you need? And, and for me, it was the thought of, okay, as a sister, what can I do? How can I show up for you in this season of your life? Um, you know, are there, because there are times where I'm like, mm, am I a good sister? Am I a good friend? Am I a good daughter? Um, you know, because I think it's easy to get caught up in what we, you know, what I want, what I need, and what I'm not getting from other people. And the whole notion of giving, you know, have to give to receive or show yourself friendly in order to have friends, all of those sayings and cliches, it's, I recognize, at least for myself, that sometimes when I do take the initiative and I reach out to others and like, hey, how are you doing? What do you need? You know, what's going on with you? That it is in some ways, it is, it's fulfilling for myself uh, of being, it, it opens the door and to help keep lines of communication open, especially, like I said, adulting, Adulting is, is hard. Adulting um, has its own set of challenges in just terms of trying to keep up, keep everything organized and stay on top of things. And then on top of that, or in addition to that, making sure that you are maintaining relationships with your friends and your family um, close and far. And if you're like me, a good portion, majority of my friends do not live in the same uh, city or state as I do, and so it adds, you know, that adds that other layer of, you know, me being intentional about getting on the phone. Sometimes it means scheduling times, like, hey, what's your schedule like on Thursday? Because this is when I'm available, are you available? And then even setting aside time to spend time together. If that means me going out of town or them coming to visit me, I mean, at first it's like, oh, this is, it's almost like work, but, to an extent it is, but you have to be intentional about scheduling time, making time for yourself as well as for other people. So I am grateful for my sister for choosing to be, being intentional and choosing to set aside time, not only for herself, but for, for parts of her village to come together to celebrate um, her celebrate her really it is yes it is about the marriage and the wedding is coming up and there's fun with that but also creating creating the space for people to be able to to exhale to kind of push pause on all the responsibilities and granted yes we can't necessarily always turn everything off but just to have that that time and that space to come together 
and 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 let go uh, to release and I think that in and of itself there was a love that was therapeutic um, to an extent and so I want to say to my sister thank you um, and to the ladies that you know that I some I met or saw again I want to say thank you to the you all as well because I got to know you all a little more um, I think you all got to know a little bit more about me and we were all able to come together with one the common goal was celebrating and supporting my sister and so I'm grateful that she has a circle a village that is as supportive of her as they are and you know runs the gamut and it, it's great to know that there are people that yes we can laugh we can joke we can dance we can have a good time but also when it comes down to it and and life starts lifing they can also be there for her, that they've got her back. They've got, you know, they, she has people in her corner because I'm not always there and I can't always be there. Um, and there's things that, hey, regardless of, regardless of the fact that you're related by blood, sometimes there's just things that you have friends that you feel closer to or you feel more comfortable confiding in about things because you don't necessarily want to bring it to family because that's just a different level. And I guess one of the things that I've learned is that that's okay, that's not, that doesn't have to be a negative. The important thing is, are you getting the support that you need? Are you, are you receiving the love and the care that you need? Even if, so if, even if it's not from me, even if it's not me that you're calling or confiding in, is there someone that, someone of value and of substance that has your back and is looking out for you who will pray with you or pray for you, who will celebrate you, who will have your back if somebody's acting crazy, all you know, all of that and everything in between. And so, like I said, I'm, I'm grateful for that as well as just the weekend. And so it was good to have that and kind of see her and her village. And it also gives me a little bit more to look forward to because my birthday is coming up and I am gonna have the chance to spend some time and reconnect with some of the people in my village and celebrate another year of life, another year of adulting. Um, and f I would say the first, well, we're still in the pandemic, but at least this year, I'm <laughs> not locked down because the last two years have been interesting in terms of celebrating my birthday, but each year is getting a little more open. So, um, like I said, for those listening, it's not always this heavy or deep, at least I try not to be, but I do hope that, <laughs> I hope that this was helpful in the sense of just knowing that if you have these feelings, if you are concerned about different things, that you're not alone. I'm going through it. There are other people going through stuff, you know, trying to figure this thing called life out and navigating this adulting journey. Um, but whatever it is that you are feeling, you're going through, whether it's fact, feeling, emotions, whatever is contributing to it, know that this is all working together for your good. And in the end, it's all going to be good because this is a part of the process, a part of the journey. So regardless of what it looks like or feels like, know that in the end, it's all good. Thank you for listening and until next time.